I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn about the anti-gravity features of beta flight. Beta flight defies gravity. Stay tuned. Beta flight 3.1 introduced some new parameters that start with the term anti-gravity. And this has led to some confusion about what exactly they do. But <laughs> the phrase anti-gravity is very suggestive. Some people have misinterpreted it to mean to believe that it mean, has something to do with, uh, with maybe 3D mode, or maybe it has something to do to give you more hang time. No, it's nothing like that. But it is something really cool. It solves a problem with handling that has plagued us for a long time, and there hasn't been a good way to solve it. The problem is that when you rapidly move the throttle on many copters, the copter changes attitude. In other words, you'll chop the throttle and the nose will pitch up, or you'll jam the throttle and the nose will pitch down. The exact thing that happens varies, but generally it is some kind of throttle pitch coupling. Moving the throttle rapidly changes the pitch axis. Now, it's not just the pitch axis. Sometimes we also see it on the yaw axis. The canonical way to solve this is by raising eye gain. Eye gain is the, the parameter that's in charge of attitude hold, but the problem is that you, you can raise eye gain to really stratospheric levels, levels that are too high for optimal flight performance the rest of the time and not solve the problem. And the reason is that the eye term does not respond quickly enough to, to handle this rapidly, oh, I jam the throttle. The eye term inherently responds slowly. That's its job. The P term, responds quickly, but has a very short memory. And so the, the P term, that's why neither of them is really perfect at solving this problem. And that's where anti-gravity comes in. Now the reason it's called anti-gravity is because it comes into play if you imagine punching out and then chopping the throttle at the very end of the punch out, right? That, that you're, you're in that sort of floaty anti-gravity, you're in a zero-g situation, and that's one place that this comes up, although it also comes up when you jam the throttle to full, and that's not a zero-g thing. But anyway, that's what they've called it, anti-gravity. And what it does is it provides a short, temporary boost to the eye term. When the throttle moves faster than a certain amount, then the eye term will be boosted as if you had higher eye gain. And what this means is that the, the eye gain will be increased only at the times when you actually need it most, and you don't have to have a really high eye, ter eye gain, which results in a really poor flying copter the rest of the time. And I'm going to show you a video where it demonstrates just how good it works. This is excerpted from my PID Tuning Masterclass. You can see here I've got a pitch eye gain of 40, and whoa, big bobble there as I punch and lower the throttle. Uh, the pitch eye gain, as you can see in the upper left. Now I'm raising it to 50, 48, 49, 50. Let's try, oh, a little better. That big bobble when I chop the throttle is a little bit smaller. And I'm going to raise it even to 60. 60 is way too high. The copter's flying really stiff. I don't like it at all. And the problem is still not solved. The nose dips and the copter yaws to the left when I chop the throttle. Now we've got the same pitch I gain of 60, but we've added anti-gravity gain of 2.0. Let's take a look at the difference. Oh, rock solid. Rock solid. Pretty solid. Maybe not quite on roll. I saw a little bit of roll. Maybe add a little bit of roll. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that this is a really cool feature, and it really is. Uh, I start tuning all new Betaflight copters now with an anti-gravity gain of uh, somewhere, I mean, 2.0 is, I think, the minimum. Maybe a little higher, 2.5 or 3.0. That's where I just start the tune. I think that is what I want the default to be. The default is zero, which means that it's disabled. And the reason for that is on some copters, some of the time, having the anti-gravity gain boost the eye term results in eye term wind up. What that means is that you go into a flip or a roll, and when you stop the flipper or the roll, the copter keeps flipping and rolling and crashes, okay? So the default is, is designed to be safe for everyone, even if it means 
that you get some reduction in flight performance. But all the copters I've built, I've had no problem setting uh, anti-gravity gain at between two and three. And oftentimes, that is all it takes to completely fix this throttle coupling to pitch and yaw. The two parameters involved with anti-gravity gain are anti-gravity gain and anti-gravity threshold. Let me describe to you how those work. Anti-gravity gain is a multiplier on the I term. So an anti-gravity gain of three would mean that when the anti-gravity feature kicks in, the I term is tripled. And you can keep raising that. I think it goes by default up to 30. So you could multiply the I term by 30. Uh, I don't think you should have to go that high, but you could certainly play with it. What I would suggest you do to tune anti-gravity gain is start with a value of two or three and do throttle punches. Now do this, do this after you're sure that you've got your P and your D term tuned reasonably well, because for example, if you just have a radically low P gain, then you're going to have a really sloppy copter because the I term is having to pick up lots of error that the P term is leaving behind. So you're going to want to have your P and your D reasonably well tuned. But start with an anti-gravity gain of two or three. Do some throttle punches, punch the throttle, chop the throttle. And if the copter doesn't hold its attitude consistently, raise it three, four, five, six. I, I'm pretty sure, like on every copter I've tested anyway, you pretty very quickly solve the issue really well, as you saw in the video that I showed you. Anti-gravity threshold, what that is, is it controls how fast the throttle has to move for the anti-gravity feature to kick in. So the default is 350. And what that means is that the throttle has to move more than 35%, 350, 35%, see the relationship there? 35% of its throttle range within a 100 millisecond window, so a tenth of a second. So if you decrease the anti-gravity threshold, it means that the throttle can move slower and the anti-gravity feature will be more likely to kick in even on relatively slow throttle moves. If you increase the anti-gravity gain threshold, it means you'll have to move the throttle faster in order to get the anti-gravity gain to kick in. I recommend that you just leave the default. You leave the default. The default, and so does Boris, by the way. The default is, uh, is done a lot of testing to find where it needs to be. It's probably right for many people. If you lower it down, the I term will get boosted during times when you're not moving the throttle all that fast and the copter will suddenly feel stiff and you won't really know why. And if you, if you raise it, the, the feature won't kick in very often. It'll be as if you didn't have it really at all. The, the reason I say leave anti-gravity threshold alone is that you really have no way of knowing when anti-gravity threshold is kicking in. Uh, so since you don't know that, it means that you don't have a really reliable way of tuning this parameter. I've requested, and maybe this will be implemented someday, I've requested that the Betaflight OSD put some kind of indicator on screen when anti-gravity kicks in. And if that were done, then you could just you could move the throttle faster and slower and see exactly how fast you have to move it to get it to kick in. And then you could maybe have a better idea of how to tune the anti-gravity threshold. But unless and until something like that happens, I would say leave the threshold alone and just tune the anti-gravity gain to get your copter to hold nose, hold its attitude steady. Well, that's it. Now you know how, what to do with anti-gravity gain. It's got a fancy name, but it's actually really simple and it's super effective at fixing the problem that it's designed to solve. I, I hope that you'll add it to your tuning repertoire. And in fact, I would suggest adding it an anti-gravity gain of 2.0 or maybe 2.5 to your default setup for basically every copter that you build. Uh, I, it's made a huge difference for me. I think it will for you as well. There you go. Hope that was educational. I hope it helps your copter fly better. And as always, happy flying.